that's something which is so important to all of us, right? We all want that independence. Independence in terms of putting forth our thoughts, independence in terms of putting forth our ideas, independence in terms of actually being given that opportunity to listen to what is the reality. And that for me, that platform for me is Soul Strings. And I guess Soul Strings would be incomplete without the figure which has made this the reality. For me, again, she is an epitome when it comes to showcasing independence. An independent lady who's, you know, uh, actually brought about so many changes. I mean, I've known her for what, let's say one and a half to two years. And I can tell you what I knew her on day one and what I know her today is falls apart. Every day I see a new chapter. Every day I see a new page. And I'm sure the book is never ending. We just have a bookmark with there today. So I would want to introduce to you Menika. And our host for the evening will be taking forward this episode. Menika, over to you. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you for the kind words as well. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Soul Strings, and it's a pleasure to have you. Let me begin the show with introducing our guest speaker, who really doesn't need a lot of introduction for many of you on this platform. He is known for many. He has been a consultant neurodevelopmental pediatrician for 36 years. He's a designated doctor for safeguarding of children and child death review at Northeast London NHS Trust. And the list can go on. He also deals with neurodevelopment disorders, autistic spectrum disorder, behavioral support to children and families, and he is involved in training and service development, and he's all about innovation. He regularly provides training to healthcare, education, and parents on management of ADHD, ASD, and neurodevelopmental disorders. Established and conducting a Tamil parent support group weekly for many, many months. And it was a pleasure to know him through another organization we both are part of. I'm humbled and honored to have Dr. Kanaga Sabai Poonendran on our platform to speak about nourishing special needs children. Though I don't have a direct experience on this matter, I grew up with my uncle and aunt, to an extent, they did have minor special needs. And I have also seen children in my extended family who are special needs children. So though I didn't have a direct experience, I can totally understand why it is important to nourish these children and embrace these families and understand how we can, as a community, support them and help them evolve and also appreciate the gifts they bring to us as a community, a society, and a population at large. Without further ado, I pass the baton on to Dr. Poninder. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon and good morning or whatever it is in the, in the spot. Thank you, Menaga and Roshan for giving me this opportunity to join with your listeners and the various parts. And this topic is quite interesting and also it's a kind of part of your soul. Children are the future and the children with special needs are, they are the future. They also play an important role in the society in the midst. And so I'll be delighted and happy to, to, uh, to answer your questions and also connect with your listeners and to help them to share the kind of their stories and our stories connectively. So especially during the COVID time, it's about connection, connecting everywhere. And then to, through that way, we help each other, help each other, listen to the stories. And so uh, I'm quite happy to to be in this platform. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Podezren. So firstly, 
Can I ask you what attracted you to choose this field of neurodisability? And I know that you really enjoy this field and you have been working in this field uh, for a long, long time. So I just want to know and want you to share with the audience as well, what attracted you to this field? So that's a kind of good question because uh, sometimes it's not easy to answer, like even you ask the children, what do they want to do nowadays? Some will say, I don't know what they want to do. But if you, the Asian community and things, they, they say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a dentist, I want to be like an engineer, they, they look at that kind of thing. So, but uh, as a child, I never thought about going to doctor or uh, all that kind of things. And maybe if you give me a personal story as a child, uh, uh, you know, I was born in Jaffna in part of Sri Lanka, northern part of Sri Lanka. So during the kind of early uh, period, uh, according to my parents and also my childhood, I became ill uh, maybe around maybe three or four or five, I can't remember the exact age. I had a, a fever, high fever and conversion. Probably looking back, I, I must have had a encephalitis, you know, fits and be in the hospital. Then after that, we've been recovered. When I came back, I lost uh, a certain my developmental milestone, my speech affected, my coordination was affected. I started to develop uh, stammering and stuttering. And also, so when I went back to school, all looked a bit new to me. Like maybe I must have some memory loss and things like that to all a bit new. Then I was also became, became slow in the school. So slow with the learning and uh, having difficulties. So uh, I could see uh, the, the children teasing me and getting into trouble. Uh, so uh, in the kind of my primary school years, I struggled in English and maths, and, but I did well in science. So those days, uh, caning was allowed my English teachers to beat me up. So uh, I didn't want to go to school and terrified and scared. And then so I experienced some of the kind of things. Uh, so when you have a kind of difficulty, people tend to look down on you. So I experienced as a child and also in the class of, of 30 children, maybe I would have come below average, maybe between the 20 and the 30 in that way. So in the O level and A level, uh, I passed on the second try. Hmm? So first time you get to, uh, below the kind of pass marks. And then so by doing that way, then of course with the kind of extra help and hard work intuition, I managed to maybe God's grace, I entered medical college. Hmm? So when I went into medical college, I work hard and study, hmm? then pass the exams. Then to, so yeah, in the medical college, I did well. Hmm? I was getting second class in all, all the exams and the final, I got a distinction in pediatrics and a second class and all came in the top 50. So that made me to work in the nice hospitals and gain training. Because I, I did well in pediatrics, I didn't know. Uh, so maybe there was interest. Then later on, after working, then I decided to come to UK to become as a pediatrician, trained in pediatrician, in the acute. Then because of my childhood experience of my having difficulties, I thought in Britain, that time neurodevelopmental place was developing field. So I went into the neurodevelopmental field. It's a bit of an interest. So when you're going to I mean, neurodevelopment, it's about dealing with the disability. Mm -hmm. Disability is some difficulty. People don't like to go in the disability. So I went in the field with the kind of interest. So I was interested in research and so I thoroughly enjoyed it and learning more. So that's the way I ended up as a neurodevelopmental pediatrician. Then of course, uh, uh, so the, the, the children, other people, parents who are having some children or some sometimes when you have a problem, later on, they, you, you may realize at the time, for me, it happened after I became a doctor. Oh, so something. So, so that uh, I became a neurodevelopmental pediatrician, learning more. So now, maybe last 20 years, uh, I gained more experience through talking to parents and learning from children, learning from those. So that may be that my experience and things have grown over the last 20 years rather than before. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ponent. And you are such an inspiration. Even though I knew you for a while and I know you are training for a long time. I really didn't know the backstory, what made you interested. So it's always nice to know. I'm sure all the audiences are really getting inspired with your story as well. Going from there, can I ask all of us um, in our community or society or the population at large across the world, sometimes we are not very clear. What do people mean by special needs? Mm -hmm. And what kind of challenges they have and even what kind of opportunities there are available 
And sometimes we are not aware, even if somebody asks us, we are not aware how to signpost them. So can I ask you to enlighten us what is really meant by special needs children and what are their challenges and what kind of opportunities they do have at present time? Okay, so that's a kind of a very good question. If you have uh, covered the three areas, what's the meaning of special needs? Then of course, uh, look at the challenges and opportunity. But if you take anything, say any human life, or, or it doesn't mean special needs or anything, you have the three things, three things. Huh? You know, you, you'll have a, what is it? Then what are the challenges uh, with that? Then of course, with the challenges, you need to think in the kind of opportunity, uh, opportunities. The, the three things are, so it's kind of key uh, foundation. When you uh, use the word special, it looks a bit cool and nice, something special, something special. So, the, so you tend to use the word special for something, something to you know, uplifting something nice. So I don't know how this uh, name given to these children, uh, and children. Uh, so, but if you talk to the parents and the other, other, other affected people, sometimes they feel, even though it's a kind of term given as a special needs child, but uh, it may be given in a kind of negative way to exclude the child. You know, exclude, okay, see a special put there. So just for the namesake, the government or WHO, uh, they say you have to include and the label is given, but in reality, is not happening that way. So having the show like this, it'll help to understand why they get the kind of special. Say, uh, now, if you take the nature, in, in nature, nature is creation, whatever nature creates, um, say if you, if you take a grain of sand, two, uh, there's no one grain of sand, it'll be different from that other grain of sand. If you take a leaf, plant leaf, if you take an animal, if you take human beings, we are all unique. Unfortunately, human being the human thing, we want to look at it, look like a other person. We want to look at this way. I want to be like that. We tend to compare, compare to look at, I want to be like that. My child, my child is not like that when you are doing that. So that's the kind of mistake we make. We try to compare, we want to do that. So like as a Menaga, there's no Menaga like you in the world. There's no person like me in the world. There's no Rohan like this in the world. We are all unique. So, so we need to understand, even though kind of special needs term, the terminology we are using it, we are all unique. So I went to a, a conference in the parents conference, uh, the parents conference, uh, there's a, a Down syndrome uh, child's mother who came and was talking about special needs. And she was saying that to the poor get his name is very bad. I don't want my child to be considered as a special needs child. I want my child to be considered as an ordinary everyday child. Isn't that true? I want my child to be considered ordinary. Yes, my child have a Down syndrome, but she's unique, she's different. There's no two Down syndrome child the same. So I want to be considered ordinary, integrated, work on it. So in that, um, so sometimes they use the kind of uh, word uh, like a special in order to maybe to give some support to the children. Maybe the government or the other people use the word. Okay, these children need, need some additional support, additional needs, so we can provide. So the, it was meant to be as an inclusion. So maybe that's a, uh, uh, the best word to be, maybe we to include, include in the kind of, so now the diversity, inclusion, this is a kind of current trend, but that's also sometimes trend, they may not do that. So it may, maybe think about inclusion or, they will, uh, the uh, end of the word they use, uh, differently able child. So maybe that's a kind of bet better term rather than special needs. It's, when you say special needs, it's confusing. So some parents don't like that to be called as a special need. I'm a differently able person, like you are. I'm a, like as, as, a, as a child, I had lots of difficulties. I was not good in English. Even now, now I know I have dyslexia. So I make spelling mistake, but the computer will correct the spelling. So we can speak, uh, you know, speak, will type it. So dyslexia, you can uh, overcome by kind of technology might help. So, uh, but I'm very good in maths, not maths and science. So uh, uh, my ability in science, but my ability is poor in English. So like that, so differently able. So the world need many people with a different ability 
we all need to connect and work together we cannot work on our own so uh, by by learning about special needs we can appreciate and help and be a better community uh, in that sense so the the term itself uh, it's a kind of, so then if i move on to the challenges is it okay if we move on to challenges yes yes please the challenges itself in the term like a, when you have a different conditions like a down syndrome mean is very easy you can so within the kind of the, this special needs there are so many conditions maybe we can call the later on conditions so down syndrome cerebral palsy the, the, so they will look differently from outside but there are, there are many condition the ch- child will look normal you know, physically um, so those are the condition like uh, autism autistic spectrum disorder some of the kind of you know mental health problems uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder tourette syndrome anxiety these are all uh, learning difficulties uh, now they are very high in number in some areas it can vary from about 10 to 20% so huge if you take parts of sri lanka up to war affected the learning difficulty children are learning different children are about 20% some areas 30% some areas 40% it's a huge big number so they are all come under this uh, differently able the children so their challenges are very big how to recognize how to accept in society there are no services available that's what made me after working in the uk be a fortunate to have in uk in developed countries neurodevelopmental pediatrician but we don't have the kind of the, the, the kind of post in at the india or in sri lanka other parts that kind of specialty is not well developed as uh, countries like a uk germany canada so that's a, makes it so children are being mis mislabeled so they are put across so their global development delay so they they don't know what the problem is so that's a increase that they don't uh, have the service so lack of services lack of understanding lack of acceptance that's a huge challenge is so huge then they come to opportunity there are lots of opportunity from the children understanding helping them supporting them so the special needs children also because of when you have a problem on neuro disability that will give opportunity to find out why is that so all the kind of innovation things we have because of the opportunity created people to innovate invent do things the 21st century all the things we, we are enjoying is because of the neuro disability people come with the kind of all the answers like a, a genetics a genome and then to ai artificial intelligence the google all those things we are enjoying is all developed by ch- children with uh, different ability microsoft is uh, like a iphone developer they all had special educational needs or, or things a bit different if not for them we will not be having this kind of meeting because the technology would have been there is all so that's the opportunity we have Thank you, Dr. Ponendran. You already answered my next question. It is very insightful to know how these special needs children or differently able children are a blessing to our society and a lot of innovation and creativity and development is happening because of them. So it's really good to know. I'm sure the audience has found that information very helpful as well. Going from there, can I ask you, what is nurturing in your terms and how can we nurture the the differently able children and what is the difference how different is it when we nurture a differently able child and a normal child according to our definition right like you said each child is unique each person is unique but in our terms so that everyone understands is there a difference in the way we need to nurture differently able children from the way we would nurture our average child okay that's again good question so uh, the brain uh, the, the children's development and we look at the most of things are based based on the brain how the brain whole body everything connecting so the mind body uh, and the brain integration in order to do that the critical period of the child's life is uh, up to 5 years up to 5 years so that's for the nurturing nourishing the, all those things need to happen so in the start 
So um, if you have a say, uh, if you know a child uh, say born prematurely, they have some brain hemorrhage or, or things like that. When things goes wrong, then of course they make the parents uh, you know worry and not to react and do things with them. So suppose the parents know a child with Down syndrome right from the start, then they may be worried. And so if the parents are negative and are unable to bond with the child or do something, they are put off and they, they think negatively. That's going to affect the child's brain health. So your thought pattern. But if you are thinking negatively, fear, then if you start to exclude, if you do that, that's not going to help. But if you want to nurture and say, okay, this is, you believe in God or anything, this God has given me the concern, I'm going to do all the best type of things, positive, all the community support and not to exclude the mother. So if you bring all the support together with the happiness and uh, uh, with the positive attitude, that's very important. The PMI, positive mindset, huh? a positive attitude with the positive attitude and do everything, nurture and work. So in that, the very important part in your soul string is about love. The love is a, it's not an ordinary love, it's an unconditional love. So whatever you are like that, you love and accept you as a child as you want, then if you do that, then the child will connect with you, bond with you and do develop and then to do. Then of course, you need to get the medical help. Whatever they are doing, that support and therapy, if you do, all those things. So early identification problem, then support and we work on it. Then of course, nutrition, nourishing. So the, the children, the, the children are breastfed, hmm? breastfed. The breastfeeding is good for the brain development hmm? for any child, with the, especially if children or normal children. Or, nowadays, people are reluctant to breastfeed hmm? or with the lifestyle. So if you breastfeed, that gives you 10 point IQ different breast milk give you 10 point IQ different in brain develop. So 10 point IQ different is a huge big money. So when you go to higher things or going to top universities about 10 point is very, very big different. So breastfeeding, nurturing, and the parents had to be calm and lovely and the mother and father living together, supporting each other. So they, if they accept the child as it is, so I have seen the parents, when they accept the child, those children do very well, very well. Even they sometimes beat the average child, beat the average child and make on I've seen, oh my, that's what made me to work with the parents and supporting parents because I know if you support the parents that way, the children will do well. And that's the, one of the fundamental reason. Um, so uh, focused on establishing parent support group, nurturing and supporting them by doing that, they can nurture and nourish the child. So that's the parenting supporting and working on it. Then suppose if you don't know a child, so a child may look a bit normal and develop. Then if the parents are distressed, especially parents are working in the abroad and you know, poor living conditions and things like that, then they may not know how to nourish the nurture even normal child. So nowadays the gadgets like a TV or a smartphone and all those kind of things may attract the child visually. Visually, child will be sitting and parents may think the child is going to be my computer specialist, he's playing with the phone, doing the kind of thing. They may think the child is going to develop, brain is going to develop, but it's uh, completely opposite. Child is going to do visual things. Child will learn like a, like a, take a tablet and doing the kind of, uh, doing this way and this way, uh, up, down, rather than holding a pen or something. Even if they hold a pen, they hold the pen like that, they, they stick it like that. Pinch. So all those things need to be developed and nurtured and developed. So, so the parents have to, uh, even normal children are normally born children. If you don't give the kind of nurturing and things and the child development going to be delayed. So that's, that's what lead into many children with autism or neurodevelopment development disorder coming up because they're not giving the kind of right kind of stimulation, parental interaction, the kind of emotional development not happening. So in the children, you have to spend more time, not to neglect and not to do the kind of things. If you work on it, then child will going to catch up. So once you catch up, then the early part and the early support. So I have seen the, the children to catch up and work on it. So it's a kind of community is important, parents is important, nutrition, grandparents, and they're all working together. Sometimes a uh, parent alone cannot help. So then it's other community support. So that's what happened in those days. The community were able to support her. Maybe in my case, I could, on looking back, my community, the, the, the way I lived, uh, my neighbors, uh, older brother type of person who nurtured me, helped me and supported me. Looking back, huh, there was a kind of great support. My parents couldn't do anything. 
So we don't have the kind of support nowadays. And maybe through this, we need to establish support like that. Thank you, Dr. Bonin. It's It was really insightful because I can understand that um, though I am not differently abled or special needs, I have had many failures in my life. And uh, the one thing which stood apart and helped me develop for, to who I am today is the support around me, my parents, my immediate family. And I was very, very fortunate to have very good friends. And I can totally relate to your saying that support within the family and the extended community and your friends goes a long way. Going from there, I am really interested to know, you have been in this field for almost four decades now. Is there anything you have learned from these differently able children or their parents or families yourself? Because even as a coach or a leader, I always think I learn as much as I teach or train. So is there anything you have taken away from them or you have learned from this experience? Okay. So uh, that's a, also a very important question because when we as a doctors and medical students, when we are taught, there's so many advances happening, but the medical schools are maybe 10 to 20 years behind. If you take Sri Lanka or the, because especially neurodevelopment, brain neurosciences, so fastly advancing. So some of the things are not there. So you, you may have a mindset huh, thinking this is a child going to be say, they say, for example, to take autism, people say it's a lifelong condition, things are not going to improve. So if you have come with that kind of mindset, then you're not going to, so it's important I learned, I need to go for training. I need to go for updating. So as a professional, the professional duty is to go for update and training. Fortunately, in the Western countries, in UK, we have, for fortunate, we have a, a protected time every year to go for training. If we don't go for training, I cannot get the rehabilitation for next year. So that's a good thing. But in other country, it's not there because of money. So I was fortunate to go to America a few times, able to take part in research. By doing the kind of, so that's the, my, uh, my part of it, self-development. I need to develop myself. That's one, but all the professionals need to develop. That's their duty. You need to read and read the journal research. That's it. As a professional, I, I've done that. Second part, in the past, I used to listen to parents. Parents will come, the, the child is bad, is not doing that, so they'll be all negative. This child's not there. Now listen to them, poor child will be sitting and waiting. I could see the child, you know, face going down and doing this with this, so all negative about it. Then as a doctor, we tend to look at the negative and these are right, taking history and then the, I may be ignoring the child, but after many years I learned, who is the important person in my consultation? My duty is for parents or the child. Then I change my approach into my duty is for the child. Sometimes I look at the parents are exaggerating or doing something, but it's happening there. Then now, maybe the last 20 years, uh, 20 years of my career, uh, first things I will say, I talk to the child first. I tell the parents, uh, the child is important. It's uh, even the nonverbal child or anything. I could communicate and look at the child first. I give importance to the child first. Then capture the child's voice, the children's voice in a letter report. First heading is children's voice. That's the first paragraph. In the first paragraph, I will first of all ask the child, tell me about the good thing about you. What are the good thing about you? What do you want to do in life? What do you want to do? It, it can be a small thing. I'll capture the things that I, I want to be a teacher, I want to be this, I want to do. Some child want to know that, uh, but I want to be. Then uh, tell me what good things. You are a computer game player, doing the kind of things, and I'll build the. So I use some of the coaching technique I learned about coaching. So I'll be coaching the child, even though I'm a doctor working, as I learned about power of coaching, and working with the sense of uh, capture. Then from that, I tell the mother, parents, look here, this is a good thing in the child. This is a kind of problem. Maybe jointly we can find a solution. So I, I changed into, I learned some neuroscience and psychiatry, psychology. I play in those things. We, instead of say, uh, I mean, talk about mental health, the psychology, it'll be confusing. If you say psycho or something, it will put them off. Mental health, put them off. So we, we need to learn about those things. Put in the simple way, okay, you're going to be like a driver or something. So, uh, so I used to, in my clinic, uh, uh, those days, I, I, I know all these uh, differently abled children, uh, they're all millionaires, hmm? billionaires. So I, uh, I used to have in my clinic, I'm having a millionaires club. The club called Millionaires Club. This is the way people are being like that. Do you want to join the Millionaires Club? So now I've forgotten this kind of so, uh, a patient I saw, he's now 32 years. So the mother was saying, 
the, the, in my work, they call me as a Dr. Puva. Hmm? It's a shortened form. I said, Puva, can you remember you uh, told me about uh, million sculptures? Uh, my son now is 32 years old. He's now want to start an independent work and he, he want to be in the, 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 the room about the million club and mind mapping and things we taught them. He worked out how he want to be millionaire. Hmm? So like that, I learned from the children. Now I work for the children. <laughs> My interest is about children rather, rather than, so I wanted to uh, teach this kind of concept to the, the future doctors. So I go to Sri Lanka and uh, teach medical students and other people. So because uh, we as a professional need to change our approach, our attitudes. So that's the kind of biggest learning for me for the last 20 years. Thank you, Dr. Ponendran. I don't know about anyone else. I have learned a lot listening to you there because I think even in, in, um, in NHS or in medical field, we always say patient-centered journey or patient-centered service. It's exactly the same way you have said it is child-centered on, and then you move forward to the sub supporting families and you have really taken it to another level. I love the concept of millionaire, billionaire club. You know, you know who doesn't want to join it, right? Um, and also, I think the, as you were speaking, the only thing what I was remembering is um, in Albert Einstein says, if you want to measure a fish by climbing trees, the, it, will, it can never measure up. So I think we often make the mistake of measuring the ability of everyone in the same yardstick. And I think it is very insightful and helpful to know how you have developed this attitude and how you are helping these people. Going from that, we have advocates to bring an equal society and inclusive society for all. And that's the reason this topic has been discussed on this platform. How can we actively encourage to integrate these differently able children and their families into our community with positivity and enthusiasm? Because I think Sometimes we do want to do it and we might not, not know how to do it. And at other times, people don't understand. Uh, underneath all those differences, we are the same people. And by in including them and positively encouraging them, integrating them into the community, we all grow much further, as they say, as um, you know, you can, uh, going alone, you can uh, go faster, but going together, you can go further. So how can we crack the code to do that? Okay. So in that uh, aspect, uh, it is a very big job, hmm? very big job, and also it to happen at a different level, government level, society level. Hmm? I think in the past, when we were in a kind of living in a society without the kind of, all this kind of, you know, modern type of network and connection and gadgets and things. So, and also now we are living in a more kind of abundance. We have so many things, there's so many things and comparing Facebook uh, and all kind of things, the social media, and like to compare, uh, some of the things are fake, they're not real. Hmm? So the people want to, you know, buy, you know, what's a, uh, um, in a fake type of things. So that uh, makes this, these children, when they have a disability, something, it's looking different. So in that, uh, it's changing in our attitude. We, we all unique, all of us are unique, hmm? but we all have a sense of, there's a purpose for it. For when you have a differently able child or person, you are born in this world for certain reasons. So we accept that we all have a certain purpose. So if in the attitude, we all uh, born in this world, we all unique, we have a purpose, that kind of things so that parents, uh, everybody, teachers need to have that. So if the teacher or parents, if the leader have that, Say, for example, if a child goes to the school, the head teacher has a kind of attitude. We all need to be inclusive, we need to work on it, hmm? so they embrace it. So they all look at the positive part of the each and every child and say, you are going to help the child, you're going to help the child. But one of the good things about children, children don't discriminate. Hmm? The, the uniqueness of the children, they include, but they, but they get the bad thing from the parents. Parents don't do, mix with the child, don't do that. So we need to start with the parents. So we, I tend to uh, think that the good thing is to empower the parent, empowering, empowering the, the affected uh, child's parent, and also other parents. So they need to empower. In some traditions and cultures, they think that if a child has some problem, so they culturally, uh, in Tamil or in Hindu religion, they, they've done something in the, in the previous birth. In Tamil, they say you are power to the tingle or something like that. 
so that's like a, again misunderstanding so they don't so like a, we are running like a group of parents and empowering groups the parents say my child is a gift from god the child i am learning more if you ask the kind of parents of the, the child is definitely able children especially children they say wow i am learning more from the the child when they have a normal child the child will be more selfish and want to do things child doesn't appreciate the but this child appreciate every little, little things so parents get so more kind of immense pleasure looking after this child and also other people learn from the child so learning from the child is so immense so we need to you know, include the child and the kind of things so that other children going to learn in life our duty you are or me my role is to problem solve that's what we are training children to problem solve so you say but as opportunity do you want to so if you don't have a problem how are you going to solve it so children are all together if they see a problem then they will solve it so the child is going to help the children to develop the brain going to develop most of so in problem so by having a so this kind of things in the nature bring those kind of children in order to work together then you will solve problems far quicker so that's what we have all this kind of development happen because people came to develop this technology it because solve the problem if we didn't have a problem then we will not progress so more forward like we have a coronavirus how things had changed we have problem so many solutions have come so the problems and the, the differently able children are must they are must for the society development that's why the nature evolution happens because we want to learn so they need to the certain kind of say this is normal the normal uh, differently able children are and they are unique we need to accept and work on it that's the second attitude then after that you must want to help say so in tamil there's a proverb called atisudi aram seye birumbu that mean you want to help you want to offer help you must you must like it first you must like in your mind think it's about thinking when you, if you think i want to help you i will definitely help you but if i say i, I, I i'm going to help you or something i can help you then of course you may not do that but if you think then you will find a way so the positive psychology positive things uh, by doing that way then the service will come everything will come so the leaders in the government can do that then we can so if you look at in britain uh, and other countries hmm, things are well developed for special needs the children the government they are the system in place because the people leaders accept that for autism and things are very well developed the services but in sri lanka india things are not there because at government level it they are not influence in the government in america very well developed people can influence the government and happy so so i have to do kind of societal level government level local authority level but you need to start from the people so the show like this have a dialogue and open minded bringing in, in together so because i told it's about 20% so we need to have more kind of discussion in, in this kind of areas so people can be aware they, they, they think about wow so what can i do so each and every part of the listeners and need to look at and say what can i do in my community go there find a person is a parent there how can i offer help and support so there's a one thing happened in a parent group hmm? there's a parent uh, uh, who 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 child with the kind of uh, autism and the difficult behavior so they come together as a play a play group uh, once a week they go there this mother didn't want to come there be embarrassed when she put the child he was um, fell on the ground and crying and she was her mother was, was frightened why i came to that kind of feeling in her face the group of parents they watched that they all went in to the child and reassured the mother don't worry and this is the end of the mother who whose child is a, a girl she is very uh, not the difficult child so next time next week this mother came the 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 the, the, the girl's mother went to this particular mother she is a difficult boy she said i will look after your son and then to you look after my my girl she is very easy to look after she went and look after but she took on the birth and then at them when they about to go back this mother asked why did you take my son you know he is very difficult and challenging that when you came next last time i didn't want to talk to you you are a bit feeling this way we were all him i want to offer you help i want to give you a break i want to give you a break so then so in here they didn't talk or anything they just visually looking at by looking at this mother felt so much she never met felt uh, even when the committee no one offered to help like this there are human being like that so in this kind of thing you can see god in the other person isn't it so the special needs children now offering you be a god 
offering help and so on. For each and every person, if you do that, other person will think you as a, oh my goodness, she's like a god. Thank you so much, Dr. Ponin. I'm sure everybody is so, uh, you know, like you can't wait to ask questions. So one last question. I totally agree with you on that. We all as a community, as families and as society, we have to ensure that we support these children, nourish these children and support the families and parents because they might have their own challenges as well. Can you please share five tips how we as society or individually can support or nourish these children and their families. And I will then um, pass it on to the floor to ask more questions. Okay. So number one is second, uh, parent, uh, parent, and you know, they, they must know what is the, what are the talents of the child? They look, look at the strength. So parents need to focus on the strength of the child first. Huh? Then also I need to look at the difficulties or disabilities. So they need to get the early diagnosis, identification. Then the parents also need to, second part, learn about it. So they have to learn what, what to do, what to not to do, what to do. Because nowadays the information is easily available. Then, so that's the kind of first part, parent learning. The second part, because these are all chronic long-term conditions. There are so many conditions. Sometimes they affect your whole, whole of life. So they need to um, learn and as time goes on because the science is advancing. So parents need to learn and support. So having a support group or some learning because uh, these are all complex issues. So the parent support group and working that way is a thing. Then the community and other people often need some additional support and help. So it must have a system in place, hmm? system in place additional because these children cost a lot of money. The additional, so this, some parents may not be able, able to support them. So in the Western countries, there are disability living allowance and support makers and there they can access it. But in Sri Lanka or India or Pakistan, it's not there. So there may be voluntary sector, they may be able to provide and support. But these children may need to use a technology. We, if you look at uh, all the touch uh, screen and all the voice uh, activated system, they all develop for children with special needs. Now they have become mainstream. We're using it because it developed for them. So they can use this kind of technology now. There are so many things. So the, they have to be given support and therapy. Uh, that's the kind of second part. Third part, as children grow older, they need uh, friendship, uh, people play together. So outdoor activities, uh, physical activities. Uh, so physical activity is very important, physical activity. Some other things are also important, like you know, simple yoga practices, simple activity practices. It also help them to mind body connection because sometimes it's be stressful behavior management. So in order to do that, sometimes the coaching technique would be helpful. So if a person have a coach, the coach can work for longer period of time. Over many, many years, you have one-to-one -one support and help and the coach can. So that's what we are thinking about, maybe developing a, a neurodevelopmental coach, coach, the parent, they can support the parents. Uh, they can easily train and develop with the coaching technique. So the, that's the kind of things that uh, uh, is uh, uh, available in America and the, some of the Europe. Uh, they, there are coaches available to support. So coaches also help them to develop skills. So these children are lacking in skills. So develop on those things. Then the long run, then the, their skills, uh, life skills ought to be taught them, the opportunity for them. So the kind of, uh, say, post 17, 18, um, you know, facilities to develop and help them uh, as they become adult uh, to develop. So the government and society need to work together, voluntary sector. But if we can sometimes, the, the public go and spend money in building something not really necessary. So in a, a Asian committee and things, so they are quite happy to build the temple, temple or churches or mosques or anything like that. They pour millions and millions in doing that. Sometimes they create war and fight or they go and build you know, wedding halls. If you go to Sri Lanka, there are everywhere massive wedding halls. What a crazy idea. So why not uh, build a kind of college or do something, people skill building, skill building places. So we need to develop, think in our way, what is the future coding opportunity? These children will code and do things. They can be the future genius. So create the kind of technology working in those kind of type of things, if we do them, they will help the wider community, they will improve the economy of the world, things. So I like to think about the 17, 18, the kind of future of the children. Then of course, uh, most importantly, 
all the people connect and say, these are all important people in, the, in our community, we need help. And if they are there only, you can help. If you are not there, you cannot help me. So uh, giving the opportunity to help and offer is a fantastic thing. Especially the, the country like Britain, Germany, and the developed countries, they are willing to help. But uh, maybe in the Asian communities, sometimes we forget the kind of, you know, the, the nurturing and nourishing. We need to change our mindset. We want to go out and respective of race, or religion, or color or anything, we help and support. If you do that kind of, that kind of diversity, inclusion, uh, if you do that uh, collectively, that's a kind of final step. Thank you so much, Dr. Pohan Indran. A day or a week is not enough to get, you know, share your wisdom. And we all have so much to learn from you. I'm sure we will be asking you to come on this platform again to share more information and the wisdom you hold with us. I have learned so much today to begin with. Differently able child is one thing I would definitely take home. And I'm sure I'll be coming and having conversation with you to learn more about this. I'm sure everybody else on this platform will agree with that as well. Before I uh, hand it over to ask more questions, I will make the announcement about the next topic we are going to have on Saturday, same place, same time. We will be speaking about why and how violence replace love in relationship and how we can turn it around and ensure love can replace the violence in relationships. The speaker is a dear friend of mine, and she was a co-speaker in De New Delhi, India last year. Along with me, she spoke, and I heard her speak, and I was in awe listening to her. She's a vice president of external relationships in a university in Canada. And um, when I asked her, she uh, obviously it is early morning in Canada when we are holding this, but she said, Menaka, because you have asked, I will definitely do that for you. So I'm thrilled to have that. And I think that is another topic which is close to my heart. And I think we all can benefit with topics like this. So I just wanted to let everyone know that is the next topic which is coming along, hopefully uh, hoping to see more people at that time. Dr. Pohneran, thank you so, so much. I learned a lot and it's been an honor and it's very humbling that you agreed to come on my platform and I'm much younger and much junior in every single way, whether it may be knowledge or skills or even experience. So I'm really honored to have you on my platform. Um, uh, please uh, put the questions uh, to Swati if you want to be anonymous or you, you will be, each of you will be given an opportunity to unmute yourself, come on the video and ask the, put the question straight to Dr. Ponendra and yourself. Whilst you are doing that, I would invite Dr. Kanta Niranjan to give the vote of thanks for Dr. Ponendra, please. Hello, everybody. On behalf of Soul String community today, I like to give my great thanks to Dr. Bonendran, our colleague, my colleague, very proud to say that we both went to the same medical school. I am not as a good, very motivational, good speaker with full of subject like him. Today, even I learned one thing, yes, children do not discriminate. I'm a grandmother now. I, I passed the stage of parenting now. It's an excellent, very powerful talk with many information. I don't think we can gain that anywhere within an hour like this. So much information you gave, not only for the parents with special need, for all the parents who are here or grandparents here. I like to thank you for that. Very good. And we are very proud to have you in our platform. I like to thank Rohan Mera for the introduction and all the team members. And my special thanks to Menaha for making, giving us an opportunity for uh, bringing very good speakers like this and um, doing a wonderful job like that. And it's really a great time I had. I, can, I feel it is a valuable time on a Saturday for one hour listening to very good speakers like this. 
and I hope everybody feel the same. Thank you very much. And Dr. Bonayendran, for your good work to continue to educate parents, people, community. And I really, I support you, the decision, rather than building various things, temples or various things. Yes, we need more skill centers and more places for education. Thank you very much, Dr. Bonayendran. Thank you, Narajan. Thank you, Kanda. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Kantan Ranjan, for those lovely words. And I know that you both go a long, long way back. And I have, you know, um, comparatively, I have known both of you for a short time. I think the next question is from Frank. If you can unmute and come on video, please, Frank. First of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Menaka and uh, Dr. Punendran, for his wonderful lecture. Uh, such a motivational speaker and a wonderful talk. Uh, words are not enough to thank and it's a short time he has uh, spoken about many points and uh, one two points which i'd like to take is one is that differentially uh, uh, differentially abled instead of the special needs which makes it uh, you know uh, different like uh, someone was telling uh, if a person cannot see or if a person cannot hear they can sense well so mm -hmm. i was just hearing a story from my dad where somebody was asking like where is god and uh, that the, the the boy who did not who could not see he said i heard this but i wanted to just show this man that i can sense god i cannot see god so he went and walked up to the speaker and said uh, you have to sense god god is in spirit so it's like that so uh, doctors opened many eyes and then uh, the other point would like to take is like people go on building temples and um, wedding halls, spending so much of money, actually it makes a lot of sense when you can develop a community and you know, mm -hmm. uh, the suffering souls or uh, the broken hearts can be healed. Uh, many of the parents and the people who are disabled like this, they need a lot of help. So let God open each one of our eyes to be a uh, you know, helping soul to them. So thanks for that. I would like to just ask you two questions, sir. Uh, not to ask actually to share, I mean, one is the question, another one is I would like to take your opinion. Uh, one is my uh, my friend who uh, who's a PT teacher actually in our school and his uh, uh, daughter, she just went into a tub uh, by mistake, unnoticed by the father and the mother. And it seems she was unconscious for about two hours. They took her to the hospital by God's grace uh, she was uh, resuscitated. She came out, but he said she had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, anger and uh, uh, arrogance after she came back, which was not normal. She was like bluish in color and unconscious for almost one to two hours. So he was just asking me uh, what could be done for that. That is one. And the second thing is, uh, I have a neighbor guy whose uh, whose son is uh, also partially disabled. Uh, partially uh, mentally and physically, but he talks and he responds well. Uh, so what can I uh, help him in? What, what, what way can I help him for the betterment? And the third one is a very unfortunate incident which happened about maybe maybe five years. Pause it there. It will yeah. be difficult to answer all three things. Maybe we will okay, sir. Okay. Two. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. First case uh, is the kind of things, uh, again, in the group, uh, you have accident. Following accidents, even normally born person, they can have accident, yeah. uh, rotor big accident, fall, injury. Then of course, uh, like uh, you go in the water. So then you have a kind of brain doesn't get enough oxygen, so called hypoxia. Then of course, uh, uh, brain cells can be you know um, can can be damaged. Hmm? Damage in, in the connection may be interrupted. So the good thing is uh, once you are resuscitated, the supporter then with the kind of all the stimulation therapy. And by doing that, you can rebuild the connection, rebuild the connection, development, activity. So in that, uh, you need to, the, one of the good thing is uh, even now all the people are stroke or anything. If you do more and more physical activity, increase the brain blood circulation, you'll have a new cells formation, new connection. So that's a, that's a new new information. So the, rather than keeping the child at home or you know things, uh, do more physical activity, physical activity, engage him uh, outside things by doing that. Then you need some therapy speed therapy or things like that, uh, but if they don't have it, they need to okay, find some someone to help us, like a normal play activity, communication. So in that, uh, uh, the, child, the person need to be assessed by a, uh, by a person who knows this uh, kind of disability. 
so it may be a neurologist, it can be uh, some of the, in respective countries, then they can talk and support and help identify the problem, impairment. Then once the impairment is identified, then you can put some intervention, therapy or things like that. No? Then that needs to be followed through, followed through, monitored and supported by doing that way. The, the, the same thing for the, the, the second case, second case neighbor, like a, the child is unable to do anything, they will have a behavior, the negative behavior, anger, is a way of communication. The child trying to communicate, I don't like it. So they need to learn the how to understand the behavior, how to manage. So it's not a simple kind of one minute answer in a kind of show like this. So they, they need to be look at, suppose we are seeing a child, it takes about one and a half hours to completely assess the child, go through everything assessment. So that's what neurodevelopmental assessment is a bit longer process, not like a simple GP appointment or 10 minutes, 15 minutes appointment. Because you need to take into everything into account, holistically look at what's the strength, how to work on it, then train the parents, support. So unfortunately, some of the things are not there. Maybe if you talk to me on a one-to-one -one basis with the main guard, then I may be able to guide you, guide you, guide you to, to how best to try to do that. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I will share that information with Frank later. Yes, Frank, you can ask the next question. Uh, no, I just wanted to share one uh, incident. Uh, actually, it was an unfortunate thing five years back in my child's uh, school. They met with a bus accident and we lost one teacher and about uh, four children. Mm -hmm. All of them uh, were about uh, seven, eight years, nine years, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one child happened to escape from that. She had something called as contusion. We had a lot of neurosurgeons and uh, pediatric neurosurgeons some of them were from UK and some of them from Muscat. Unfortunately, they could not come, but one person tried to help them out. Uh, so they called it something like contusion and we could help them by finances and uh, trying to motivate the, the encourage the parents. They're doing some treatment in, uh, in CMC Vellore in Chennai, uh, in Vellore in Tamil Nadu. Um, I don't know, they said it will be a long run or something. So it will take a long time for the development and of the brain and cells. Uh, anything from your side, sir, which you could help them or some latest therapies which can, uh, basically because of the bus accident, I think she got hit on the head and uh, uh, and a lot of glass pieces and other things, trauma to the brain. And because of that, they said uh, the cells have been affected. So if if okay. you know something, you can share it with Menaka or you can tell me that we can be right. uh, some. Yeah. So like uh, when you started the kind of things that you, you said about multisensory, if you uh, know about Helen Keller, Helen Keller is a famous person. He 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 be he, he became deaf and blind uh, due to encephalitis hmm, at the age of three or four. Hmm, that she became blind and deaf. But the, she, she had a kind of... Uh, uh, coach and trainer, Anna Sullivan, she trained her to use the sense, touch to feel and able to explore the world. Then she developed and she was able to speak. She went to university, uh, to Harvard, uh, and then she learned, she learned to uh, learn Russian, learned to play chess. She became ambassador for the kind of, you know, world. So I read a book called Story of My Life. This is what the book worth reading is, Story of My Life by Helen Keller, So which talks about how to, so the neuro brain has a uh, neuroplasticity. In order to have neuroplasticity to work on it, you need people around it. So with the Velour is a famous hospital, they have a kind of thing. So they can look at the what is the advances in medicine, what are kind of things. It's not advances in medicine going to tackle the child. It's about the people around her, how to work and support and have a positive attitude. But if you people around her, depressed and sad, or you they're going to doctor, you do it for me, therapist, you do it for me, you do it for the other people, that, that's not going to work. In my experience, I found out people are don't know. People are reluctant. They are in their mindset. They are so despondent and depressed, or or given up. Uh, they are lost. But they need to come together. Okay, this is the thing, sir. So you need to work a simple tip. This is what you are going to do. This is work on it. That's what I, I told you earlier. It's a coach coaching approach. It's a long. It's a long way. It's a marathon, not a hundred meter run. It's a marathon. You need to prepare and work on those kind of things. And then if you do that, you can achieve that. So first, all of us, my positive attitude, some of the things you can achievable. So if you have a big goal, the unrealistic goal, then of course uh, it's not possible to achieve. 
then you must know this is what uh, be achievable. It, it make the child functional, able to communicate, able, able to integrate, it's like that, all those kind of things. So, so as a neurodevelopmental pediatrician, I'll be making this kind of recommendation and things like that. Maybe the doctors or who want to talk to me or anything, then I can guide and say, this is a technology. Now the assistive technology is so advanced. Well, so so the so the, those are type of things can be case case by basis. I can guide them, help them on an individual basis if need to be. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Helen Keller said there is when one uh, door closes for happiness, another door always opens. And we are so focused and we spend so much time looking at the closed door. We often lose the opportunity to see the open doors and people who have been coached, some of them are here and they know we do this exercise all the time. And it is so important, I think even as doctors, parents, families, for us to be able to show that door or help them see that door, I think sometimes. Thank you so much, Dr. Ponison, for that. Uh, bringing um, Helen Keller. I really love her quotes and some of her quotes are in my book. So, you know, I really admire her. I think there's a question from Roger Cheetah. So Priya says, what if the parent in a shock when she saw her child's last moment, what will be your suggestion? Okay. So that's a kind of quite natural things to, to have a shock and bereavement and grief, all those kind of things. So that's also can come straight away out some time or later on. So, so the so the mental state and things is quite normal. Your emotional things has to do support. So in that uh, uh, the initial things that people can support the immediate family, so the, uh, the people can some. Then of course uh, sometimes you may need to go for professional help. So maybe be in the so wherever you are in the country and the things that's there, then you can access the kind of services. Especially in the UK system, we have a GP system. So you can go to GP, GP can support, and GP can refer or, or to do that. And also, sometimes uh, if you are within the kind of certain culture, the, the spirituality, the religion, that also gives a kind of some. Sometimes we tend to think this way it should be, this way it should be, this way it should be. That's why I said earlier, you need to look at the open minded, open mind. This way has happened. So but, uh, I cannot go back and do all those kind of things. So how I can move on, what I can do, what to do. So I accept the kind of eventuality, this will happen. So in order to do that, this person need a guide. The person cannot do it on their own. That's what I said, maybe the kind of, you need a professional help or family member or friend or coach. So th th there are so many people can uh, give this kind of techniques. And the techniques are simple technique. In the most important part of the technique is listen to them. Unconditionally listen uh, they, them to uh, you know, open it up. So, so sometimes I also tell them maybe maybe think on paper. You know, write in a paper, write down everything, empty your mind, asking all the questions, these are things that might happen, all that's in write down. Then with the kind of you, your friend or the therapist or coach or family member, maybe try to answer the question. Then some other things you put away. Okay, so all gone things in. Then you have a kind of maybe passion or things, uh, maybe because of the child or this and what I want to do, then that will give kind of opportunity, some input as energy, then you will see your life transforms into that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope that uh, answer is enough for you. Otherwise, uh, if you can um, reach us on Soul Strings, we will definitely put the question through to Dr. Fonendran even later. One anonymous question is, how do we identify uh, children, they are special needs. And when do we know we need professional help? Okay. Because uh, there are so many different uh, different conditions. Uh, uh, some of the conditions will be known after birth, like a Down syndrome or children with. So every country, they have a kind of developmental checkup. So the child will be born normally, looking normally. But some of the things will come to light as they develop. So the commonest problem in the children is speech and language delay. Speech delay, children doesn't communicate. So speech and language delay is a kind of maybe about 20%, 30% children will be speech and language delay. So that may be to environmental, environmental where you are doing, not able to stimulate, work on, I told you earlier, if the child watching TV and things like that, they'll be mostly visually things and they're not listening and trying to speak. So that's a kind of environmental component. There may be some hearing problems. So, so that if the child is 
having speech and language delay, then the ATB has this. Out of the children, some of them may be having early development like uh, autism or autistic spectrum disorder. Then they be not only able to speak, they are not able to have poor eye contact, not play, they have a, a typical um, uh, repetitive behavior, arranging things in the way, uh, spinning things. So they are abnormal behavior, abnormal, they are normal behavior. Normal behavior, put in play, imaginative play. So if they have those kind of symptoms and signs, the professional need to be assessed. So the child between two and three, if you have this kind of concern, then they have to be assessed by a health visitor or the speech and language therapist or pediatrician or doctor, they need to assess. So the, the key things is early suspicion, and nowadays with the Google and things, and you can suspect, go there and with things, it will give an answer. Then to go to a kind of professional who experience and assess the child. Then the child may have a motor problem. Child not able to stand up and walk or anything. Then you may have a motor problem. So they may be due to cerebral palsy or muscular dystrophy or those things as a motor problem. So child is not developing the milestone. Child should be able to walk by about 18 months. By two years and two and a half years, not, not walking. So you can say, oh boy, he's going to do, it's a boy who's going to do it. So not to put it uh, down, down plate. So uh, have the kind of curiosity, go there. Sometimes people are a bit scared to, I don't want to be child to be identified, I've done something wrong. Or, no, don't think negatively, go and ask for help to be assessed. Then some of the condition may come on later on in the school. Learning difficulty may come, the child not learning, having difficulties, maybe behavior problem. So child not learning or uh, having the kind of difficult domain to learn present as a behavior problem. So a child may be hyperactive, not able to sit still, tremble, tremble. So behavior problem is a sign of neurodevelopmental problem, ADHD, autism, things developing. So all those things are different conditions presenting at a different ages. So assessment, then once you assess, then you must do the early help and intervention. If you do that, uh, um, the good news is children can catch up and develop. So that's a kind of very important part. Identify, assess, uh, help, offer help, support. They will catch up and develop well. Thank you so much, Dr. Ponendran. Officially, our session is coming to an end, but of course, we always have after party. So who wants to hold on and be on the line, please be there. Next time, same place, same time, we will be speaking about how we can replace violence with love in relationship. Happy Independence Day for everyone who is in India and uh, have a great day. We will hopefully see you next week, same time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and keep smiling. Thank you from Soul Strings. Thank you, everyone.